Well, hello, everybody, and welcome to Basic Gospel with Bob Christopher. I'm Bob Davis, and we're glad you're with us today for the first of three Friday broadcasts as Bob takes us through the Christmas story through the accounts of Matthew, Luke, and John. No live phone calls today, but you can still get your questions to us anytime by voicemail at the usual number at 844-322-2742, or if you prefer, by email to bob at basicgospel.net. Either way, we'll be glad to hear from you. But for right now, let's get today's program underway. It's the story of Christmas, and here's Bob Christopher. Well, it's always the most exciting time of the year, I think, for every person on the planet uh, who knows Jesus or knows something about Jesus. Uh, This was a long-awaited event um, as far as the history of Israel is concerned. They've been told, you know, year in, year out that a Messiah is coming. And 2,000 years ago, he came. And that's the story that we're going to be discussing, all the events surrounding that blessed birth of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And this week, we're going to look at the story from Matthew's perspective. And he records uh, the birth of Christ in the first two chapters of his, uh, of his gospel account. And he begins with, I think, a, a, an odd uh, way. He starts with a genealogy. Mm-hmm. He starts with the genealogy of Jesus. And he says this way, he couches it this way. He says, the book of the genealogy of Jesus Christ, the son of David, the son of Abraham. So that's a mouthful right <laughs> right there. That's yeah. not just an introductory sentence. I mean, that is filled with a lot of information that flows to us from the Old Testament. So we see that Matthew is interested in connecting Jesus both to Abraham and to David. Why Abraham? Because God made a promise to Abraham that through his seed, the world would be blessed. And we see that in Galatians 3.16, Paul explaining the gospel message to the people at Galatia. He says, now the promises were made to Abraham. And that's, that's exactly right. Yeah. He said, you're going to have a son. And when that information came from God to Abram, he believed God and it was credited to him as righteousness. Now that son came some time later, uh, and it came in a way that, uh, it had to be supernatural. God had to be involved in it mm-hmm. to bring Isaac into existence. Uh, but Isaac came and then God said, I want you to sacrifice this son, all picturing this Jesus uh, through whom the world would be blessed. So uh, Paul writes this, now the promises were made to Abraham and to his offspring. And it does not say, and to offsprings, referring to many, but referring to one and to your offspring, who is Christ. So this promise that was made almost 4,000 years ago to Abraham was being fulfilled in Jesus Christ. He was that promised seed. Now, he also connects Jesus Christ to David. So we read in Isaiah 9, 6 through 7, for to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and of peace, there will be no end on the throne of David and over his kingdom to establish it and to uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time forth and forevermore. So there was a promise back uh, in Isaiah that someone was going to sit on the throne of David and it was going to be an eternal reign. So Matthew is connecting Jesus Christ to David saying he is the rightful king. He, he is the one that is going to take the throne and rule and reign forever. And his rule and reign is going to be a reign of justice and righteousness forevermore. Absolutely. So we see this in the story that Jesus Christ was born. He's connected to Abraham, the promises of God. He's connected to David, the one who is going to rule forever. That's Jesus, and when he came into this world, he assumed those identities. Mm -hmm. And that's why this is such a special, special story. This Jesus, this babe that was born in a manger, uh, is not just an ordinary child. Uh, There is 
fingerprints of, of God and supernatural and things from above, not from below, all over this story. Now, the birth of Jesus Christ took place this way, and we read this um, later on in, in chapter 1 of Matthew, starting in verse 18. He says, Now the birth of Jesus took place in this way. When his mother Mary had been betrothed to Joseph, before they came together, she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. And her husband Joseph, being a just man and unwilling to put her to shame, resolved to divorce her quietly. So this was a dilemma for Joseph. What was he going to do? He knew that this child was not his. Uh, that was probably an embarrassment to him, but he didn't want to embarrass Mary. So he was going to divorce her quietly. But as he considered these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream saying, Joseph, son of David, do not fear. And I love this about all the incidences of this Christmas story, angels appearing to various people. They always begin the conversation with do not fear, do not fear. Mankind, uh, it, or we, we have fear within us. Where did that come from? The sin of Adam and Eve. The first thing Adam and Eve did after they ate of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, they hid themselves from God because they were afraid and they were ashamed because of their nakedness. So fear entered into humanity. It became a part of our um, natural DNA. And so we naturally, when it comes to the things of God, that fear is very active. Sure. So that's uh, why the angel always said, do not fear. So he says, do not fear to take Mary as your wife, for that which is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. So this is a God thing. Yeah. This, is, this, this is not a man thing at all. This has nothing to do with you and me or with Joseph or even with Mary, other than the fact that it was her womb that God placed Jesus into. Yeah. That's just, just amazing. So it was conceived from the Holy Spirit, and she will bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people for them, from the, their sins. And all this took place to fulfill what the Lord had spoken by the prophet. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel. Now, that is just amazing. So we see that uh, Jesus was going to be born. Uh, Mary was going to be the mom. Joseph was going to stick around and raise uh, Jesus as his own son. And when he was born, uh, Joseph gave him the name Jesus. Now, there's meaning to that name. Yes. Uh, it is the Greek word for the Hebrew name Joshua. Mm -hmm. And it means to save, to save uh, his people from their sins. That's what the name Jesus means. So right there we see in this Christmas story, uh, Jesus's mission, yeah. that he came into this world to do something. What did he come to do? To save us from our sins. And then we see something else about a name. He was going to be called Emmanuel. Well, what does that name mean? Well, it means God with us. So what do we see? Well, right here in the name of Jesus, Jesus and Emmanuel, we see the gospel story being told to us through the birth of Jesus, that Jesus was going to die to save us from our sins. He was going to be raised back to life so he could come and be with us and be with us forever. Yes, That's why this is such a story of good tidings and a story that brings joy to the heart. Indeed it does. It's Basic Gospel, everybody, with Bob Christopher. I'm Bob Davis, and we're glad that you're with us for session one of the Christmas story here at Basic Gospel. And we're pausing for just a moment to remind you that we need your help to continue broadcasting and streaming this good news of Jesus Christ every day. Of course, the Christmas story is uh, one of the very first and foremost that uh, we enjoy every year. So we want to continue to uh, talk about it uh, during these next few weeks, but we also want to proclaim him going forward 
every day of the week, every year. If basic gospel has found a place in your life, friends, please, uh, please help us keep the message going so that others might hear, believe, and live in the good news, the gospel of grace in Jesus Christ. Click donate at basicgospel.net to help with your gift today. Again, that's basicgospel.net. And when you make your contribution during this month, we have something special coming back to you, our way of saying thank you for your uh, standing with us at Basic Gospel. But right now, let's get back to the Christmas story. And here again is Bob Christopher. So we're going to continue. Uh, Jesus is born. He's born in Bethlehem. Uh, Some wise men are going to come. But before we get into that, let's just kind of recap where we've been thus far. So Matthew begins his uh, gospel account with a genealogy. Mm -hmm. And in that genealogy, he connects Jesus to Abraham and to David. And it's important for Matthew to do that. So he wants to establish right from the very beginning of his particular account that this Jesus is the promised one that God uh, made to Abraham. Through your seed, the world is going to be blessed. When Jesus arrived on the scene, he fulfilled that promise. And now through faith in Jesus, people all over the world are being blessed with what? New life and the gift of the Holy Spirit. So he connects Jesus with Abraham, and then he connects him to David. So Jesus is, is, is both the prophet, uh, he's, he's Lord, but he's king of kings. And so he's going to sit on the throne of David forever, and he is going to rule and reign by grace and truth. That's what his reign is going to be about, and we're going to reign with him. Mm-hmm. That's the good news. Good news. Uh, we're going to be identified and connected with him. We're children of promise who rule and reign with the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Yeah. So he was born in Bethlehem. He was given the name by Joseph, Jesus, and he carries another name, Emmanuel, which means God with us. Now, after Jesus was born in, in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, so Matthew uh, time stamps this birth. He places it into a historical uh, time period. So we know when King Herod ruled and reigned, and so we can know when he was born or, you know, be, be pretty close to when he was born. So during the days of Herod the king, It says, wise men came from the east uh, to Jerusalem, saying, where is he who has been born king of the Jews? Now, we read into this story that there were three wise men, but that's not what the story says. We have that great song, uh, We Three Kings of Orion are, and so we we get our theology from these songs (laughs) oftentimes, but the word of God doesn't give a number. Uh, We also assume three because of the gifts, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. So we think here was one that gave gold, here was one that gave frankincense, and here's one that gave myrrh. But again, that number is not there. We don't know how many wise men came to see Jesus. But they were asking. They went to Jerusalem, and they're asking, where is this person that's been born king of the Jews? For we saw a star when it rose and have come to worship him. And that's significant that they came to worship Jesus. Now, we know in the Old Covenant uh, that the very first commandment is to not have any other gods before the one true God. And so people coming to bow down and worship Jesus, that's saying something. Yes. That this, this Jesus is something different than you and me, that he is worthy of our worship. Uh, which means that indeed he is God in human flesh. Mm -hmm. So that's a reference to his deity. Now, when Herod the king heard this, he was troubled and all Jerusalem with him. And so he assembled assembled the chief priests and scribes of the people, and he inquired of them where this Christ was to be born. And they told him in Bethlehem of Judea, for so it is written by the prophet. And we see that prophecy in in the book of Micah, um, chapter 5, verse 2. And you, O Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, for from you shall come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. So they consulted the word of God. They consulted their scrolls. 
And they came back with an answer to Herod. Hey, Bethlehem is where the Messiah is going to be born. So we know that this story is rooted in Scripture. It's rooted in the Old Testament. It's not something that was just made up. It's not something that just happened serendipitously. It, it, it is rooted to the history of the people of Israel going all the way back to Abraham and even back to Adam and Eve in the garden where God said that uh, your seed will crush the head of the serpent. So that was a reference to Jesus Christ. So this story has been unfolding for thousands and thousands and thousands of years. They were eagerly anticipating the moment when this person would arrive. That's why the Christmas is is uh, is stamped with this word Advent. Uh, what they had been waiting for had actually come. Jesus was now here. Yeah. So Bethlehem was the place, and this was determined uh, by the Word of God. So the Word of God said that, put a dropped a little pin like on our <laughs> Google Maps, and yeah. says, "Here's where it's going to happen. Mm -hmm. Here is where this this child is going to be born." They consulted the scriptures, and then Herod drew up a plan on how he was going to try to get rid of this baby yes. named Jesus. Yes, indeed. Well, it is the Christmas story, friends, and uh, Bob Christopher and I uh, and our staff invite you, our listeners, to subscribe to the Basic Gospel Daily Devotional because, like I said, the Christmas story is uh, one of the two most important stories that we talk about every year, uh, but we like to talk about him and proclaim him every day of the year. So if you subscribe to our Daily Devotional, you'll hear that proclamation continue, and it's free, and it arrives in your, your morning mailbox every day. You can start each day being reminded of God's love and grace in Jesus Christ. Subscribe today and you can start tomorrow in the sure knowledge that you are a dearly loved child of God. And you can start your free subscription right now at basicgospel.net slash subscribe. We hope you'll do that today. And again, that's basicgospel.net slash subscribe. Okay, now let's get back to the Christmas story. This is part one, and here's Bob Christopher again. So the wise men have come to Jerusalem. They've asked, where is this babe? They have found out that Bethlehem was going to be the place of birth. So they go there, they go into the house. Now, we we always uh, build the nativity. We have Mary and Joseph. We have the manger. We have yeah. Jesus in the manger. We have the shepherds. We have sheep. And then we have the wise men. And we think this all took place within, you know, two weeks maybe of, mm -hmm. of Christ's birth. But that's not the case. Uh, this could be almost two years after the actual birth of Jesus. Mm -hmm. So they're not in a cave. It says they're in a house. Yeah. So the wise men go into a house. They see the child with Mary, and they fall down and worship him. And that's an act of faith, isn't it? Indeed. So God sent Jesus into this world. We encounter him. We find out who he is. We find out what he's done for us. We see all of that in his name, the fact that Jesus means that he's going to save us from our sins. Emmanuel means that he's going to be with us. And the only response that is, is, is right is, and, and, and appropriate for that encounter is a response of worship, bowing down and worshiping the Lord Jesus Christ. He alone is worthy of our worship. And that's exactly what these wise men did. They fell down and they worshiped him. And then opening their treasures, they offered him gifts, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And then being warned in a dream they did not return to Herod. They departed another way to their own country. Yeah. Now, that was significant. God is in the midst of all the details of this. He knows what's going on in the heart of Herod. He knows what's, uh, what's being plotted and planned and schemed. And so he intervenes. He says to the, to the wise men, don't go back to Jerusalem. Go home another way. And that's exactly what he did. Now, Joseph, he's uh, brought in on this plan as well. And God says to him, I want you to take Mary and I want you to take Jesus and I want you to leave Bethlehem and I want you to go to Egypt. So in verse 14 of chapter two, and he rose and took the child and his mother by night 
and departed to Egypt and remained there until the death of Herod. And this was to fulfill what the Lord had spoken by the prophet. Out of Egypt I called my son. So this was a part of the story that had been uh, laid out in the Old Covenant, in the Old Testament by the prophets. Mm -hmm. And so they went to Egypt and they hung out in Egypt for a while until Herod died. And then after Herod died, Joseph got his family, gathered his family. They left Egypt and they went and they didn't want to go back to Jerusalem. They were warned not to Mm -hmm. in a dream. So they went up to Nazareth and he said, and he went and lived in a city called Nazareth so that what was spoken by the prophets might be fulfilled that he would be called a Nazarene. Now, there's not a specific verse that says that in the Old Testament. It's cobbled together from some like Samson, the Nazarite code, um, some other things. It's cobbled together that he would be called a Nazarene. But that's the story. So Joseph has a vision and an angel appears to him. He announces to him what's what's going to happen, and he says, Do not fear. Take Mary as your wife. He did so. They leave from the, the region of the Sea of Galilee, from Nazareth. They go down to Bethlehem, and we'll, we'll look at that next week when we look at Luke's account of the story. Uh, but they went to Bethlehem. Why? Because that was the city of David. That's where David was born. And since Jesus was a son of David and he came through that line of Judah, then they went to Bethlehem. Well, that's exactly what the word of God said they would do. Then they escaped. They went to Egypt. They came out of Egypt. And when you start to look at how all of this unfolded, you start to see a lot of similarities to the Exodus, how Abraham's family, uh, they were there in, in the promised land and a famine came and they left the promised land and they went to Egypt mm-hmm. and they remained there for almost 400 years, 400 years. And then the Lord delivered them out of the Egyptian bondage into freedom and brought them back to this promised land. So this story kind of follows that exodus. So here's what we need to take away from this, how Matthew lays it out, that Jesus is the long-awaited Messiah. He's connected to Abraham as the son of promise, the seed through whom the world would be blessed. He's connected to David as the rightful heir to the throne of David. And he's going to assume that throne and rule and reign from there forever. And his reign will be marked by justice, by peace. He will rule and reign through grace and truth. Uh, The other aspect of this is that uh, this story is Israel's story. I mean, God has been telling this story to them since the very beginning. And so every prophet that came along that tried to draw the people of Israel back to the Lord, they had information within their prophecies about this person called the Messiah, this person that was going to come. And we see those prophecies, almost 300 or so, Uh, in the Old Testament, all fulfilled in the person of Jesus Christ. So the fact that Jesus came brings validity to the Old Testament. It stamps um, a verification from God that what he said was actually true and that he is faithful to deliver on his promises. So when he arrived, he was worshiped. And guess what we do? We worship him through faith in response to the grace that he brings us. Just great, Bob. Thank you for sharing the clarity of uh, the human birth of the Lord Jesus Christ. And friends, thank you for being with us today for part one of the Christmas story on Basic Gospel. If you have questions about anything you've heard on Basic Gospel, or in general for that matter, well, the phone line is always open for you at 844-322-2742. We love hearing from you, our listeners, and we'll be glad to address your question. Again, that number, 844-322-2742. Use at any time, 24 hours a day, 844 322 
888-888-2742. Also, if Basic Gospel is making a difference in your life, help us keep the good news coming by supporting Basic Gospel with your prayers and with your gift. You can do that right now or anytime at basicgospel.net. Well, now for Bob Christopher and the ministry team, I'm Bob Davis inviting you to be with us again on Monday for Basic Gospel. Have a great weekend, everybody, and Merry Christmas.